Well, I am so excited to be sharing this video with you today. This is actually a collaboration with Elle from Elle is for Living. And I have to tell you, I was so incredibly honored that she asked me to do this collaboration with her. She's someone that I respect and admire very much. Her videos have meant a lot to me. I've learned so much from them. They are full of wisdom and advice, and I always feel better for having watched them. She does Sunday chat type videos where she'll share with us maybe a self-improvement topic. Um, she also does during the week beauty type videos, favorites, things like that. So there's a little bit of something for everyone. I happen to enjoy all the different varieties of videos she does but I will link to her channel below on the off chance that you're not familiar with her please do go check her out you will be so very glad that you did so our collaboration video today is the perks and perils of working versus not working and my portion of the collaboration is the perks and perils of not working as I have mentioned to you before, I am a housewife and that wasn't always the case. So I just want to talk to you a little bit about some of the pros and cons of that lifestyle and then maybe some ways that if you're maybe not comfortable with it right now, some maybe things that you can do that might help change that situation. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the perks of not working. And probably people that currently work might think that not working is full of perks. And while it is, there are perils too. There are drawbacks. It's not always a bed of roses. But, you know, I do feel very fortunate to have the option to not work, so I did wanna start by mentioning the perks. First of all, you can make your own schedule, and that is fantastic. I love to not have to get up at a certain time, or more importantly, I don't have to be somewhere at a certain time. I usually still get up pretty early, but it's nice to be able to have that time in the morning to work on maybe answering my YouTube comments or having coffee at my leisure and kind of starting my day and my activities as I choose. When you work a normal sort of traditional eight to five schedule, you have to be up and going feet on the floor and ready to go. And so it definitely is a perk to not have to do that any longer. The second thing that for me is really an advantage is being able to run my daily errands such as grocery shopping or the post office at non-peak times. I think it is such a luxury to be able to go to the grocery store at maybe 10 a.m. on a Tuesday versus going at 5.30 during the week or on a Saturday or Sunday afternoon. Everyone is there, it's super hectic and chaotic, and I just feel very fortunate to be able to go when I want an off-peak time. And that might seem like something small, but I think for a lot of us who like to cook and grocery shop, you know how nice it can be to be there when you really have the time to go through and not be rushed. The third thing is I definitely have more opportunities to travel. It's nice to be able to schedule a visit with friends or family and kind of be able to go at any time that I choose and not have to work around a work schedule, scheduling vacation or things like that. Uh, you know, maybe if you have children, your children's school schedule. So I do have a lot of freedom to be able to do things like that. And that being said, I also have a lot more time for friends and family. I just have more personal time to spend spending time with my husband, spending time with my parents or the people that I love in my life. And finally, it's just sometimes a lot less stress and aggravation to not work a traditional job. I don't have that pressure of working for a boss. I don't have coworkers that you may have uh, good times with, but maybe also some conflicts with. So there definitely is some advantages to not having that external pressure. Now let's, that all sounds really good, but now let's move into some of the perils because like I said before, every day is not a cakewalk. So some of the perils of not working are, are first off, you have to adjust your lifestyle and budget. I can't just because I have the time to do so, I just can't shop every day. I can't go out and just spend limitless amounts of money. My funds are limited and probably a little bit more so since I don't bring in an income. So you can't let boredom really uh, encourage you to go out and shop. That's not going to be a long-term solution. Retail therapy is fun sometimes, but it is not a long-term solution to the boredom that can come along with not working. 
Also, there is a bit of isolation. I think I've really adjusted to it over time and there definitely is an adjustment period, but not working can be very isolating. You don't have that social network and while sometimes your coworkers may get on your nerves or maybe you do have some conflicts, there is a lot of social networking that goes on with those friends. You probably have gone to parties from with people at work. You've probably been involved in their lives, their children's lives. I know that I also used to really enjoy swapping recipes with the ladies at work. So some of the little things like that that I missed uh, coming in on Mondays and talking about your weekend. And I don't have anyone to do that with now. So there are some things that can be a little bit isolating. Just something to be aware of if you're not prepared for that. Third, I think a loss of purpose in your life can bring on some depression and anxiety. Not having somewhere to be first thing in the morning is really nice, but sometimes also it can be a little depressing and cause you a little bit of anxiety. You know, what am I doing with my life? What is my purpose? Why, what am I doing each day? What is my purpose for being here? And sometimes that might seem a little bit of a deep kind of thought, but these are kind of the things that you do wrestle with when you're not working. What, what am I doing? What are my long-term goals? How am I going to spend my time from here on out? And those are things that you do have to deal with. Um, also, I think that something that I've had to learn to cope with also is maybe a little bit of guilt about not working. My husband works a traditional job, so he's at you know 40 plus hours a week. Um, my friends, a lot of my family are working, and sometimes they might be envious of the fact that I don't work, and they may not realize that there are some of these perils, that it isn't just rosy every day, that I have had some times where I felt like maybe a little bit more isolated or that I didn't have a lot of purpose. And I had to get over some of that guilt about them going to work and myself not going to work. It works for us. It's comfortable for both my husband and I, and that's important that we both agree on it, but it really does work out well for us and we enjoy our life and our flexibility very much. But I did have to gain that acceptance over time and say, it's okay. I don't need anyone else's approval. This is between my husband and I, and it works for us. So that is something that I did have to struggle with. Now, how can we work on some of these perils and put into action some items to help you deal with that. First of all, um, I'm going to reference you back to Elle's channel to a video that she did about starting a club. I think specifically she was talking about a book club in that video, and that's an excellent idea. If there's something that you have always enjoyed doing, but you don't have a social group for that particular hobby, why not start one? There's got to be other people in your social group, in your age range, or religious belief that would really benefit from and enjoy spending time in a club focused on that activity. Maybe it's a gardening club, maybe it's a book club, maybe you meet at a restaurant and try something new once a month. There are no limits to the amount of things that you can find. There's knitting, there's uh, maybe you all like cats or you all like dogs. Just find something that you love and find a social group of people that you can share that love with. Second, make lists and set goals. I can't uh, impress upon you how important this is. I have a list every day of my goals, and this is actually something I've talked about my grandmother with as well. It is so important to keep purpose and to have something to do. It may seem like relaxation is great and not having obligations, but too much of that is not a good thing. You must have purpose. We all need to feel like we have a purpose here, that we are important to someone, and that the things that we do matter to other people. So I think the first couple weeks of maybe being unemployed or not working are that sort of honeymoon vacation period where you enjoy not having any obligations, but over time you're gonna find that you really want to set goals and have purpose for yourself. Next, I want to talk about maybe exploring new hobbies. Try things that you maybe didn't have time for before. I've always wanted to learn a second language. I would have the opportunity to do something like that. Maybe revisit old hobbies that you had to set aside because you didn't have time for them anymore. Look at those again and see if you can't pick those back up and start incorporating those into your life now that you have more time. And finally, be prepared. Set aside money if you know that this is coming if you're looking for retirement. Sometimes with a layoff, we're not always prepared, but be prepared. I think 
Being prepared gives me the most security. I'm not worried that I'm not working because of financial reasons. We can afford it and that takes away a lot of the anxiety out of the situation. So if you're planning for retirement, if you're planning to have um, a child and you know that you don't wanna work after that happens, just prepare. Start living now without that extra income. Live as if you would live without the extra income and see how that feels, get used to it. Become accustomed to it and incorporate that into your current life to make sure that you know exactly what to expect. And that will take out a lot of that scary instability and anxiety out of the situation. So that is it. This is a really wide ranging topic. I hope that I've covered my portion of this well for you and that I gave you some insight a little bit about the perks, perils, and the ways that you can cope with not working. I thank you so much for watching. And again, please do go check out Elle's half of this video. You will really enjoy it, I am certain. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you very soon. Bye-bye.